Hello and welcome to my video today. I just got update 2025.14.1 last night. It's now the next morning and I'm gonna check it out. So let's get started. If we look at the release notes, the first item here is alternative trip plans. Multiple trip plans are now available for you to choose from allowing you to better suit your travel needs. We have fastest, which offers the quickest route, best amenities, prioritizes stops near open and highly rated restaurants, shops, and restrooms. And lastly, we have fewer stops, which minimizes charging stops. So this is great on long distance trips. You can kind of customize how you want to do your travel. I definitely think this is an improvement that we've been waiting for for quite a while. Let me quickly go into navigation right now. I wanna to go to Richmond, Virginia, for example. Let's see what it suggests. All right, so on here we show that it suggests stopping in Henderson, North Carolina for a supercharger stop. It's gonna be at 25% state of charge and it's only gonna need about eight minutes. And then we arrive at Richmond with 10%. You can also set the arrival energy or remove the charging stops. So that's pretty cool. So as far as this goes, this gives, uh, this gives us the fastest option here. And then if we click on best amenities, it gives a slightly different one. So it gives you a charging stop in Wake Forest, North Carolina, charging up um, for 11 minutes. And your destination is also Richmond at 10%. So just gives you different options here. This is probably not the best example since this trip is only about uh, 160 miles or so but gives you an idea that you can switch between different options here. Another update that happened is the avoid highways option. You can go into controls, scroll down to navigation, and then there should be an option for navigation, avoid highways. However, it is not on my list here. So I don't, I'm not sure if it's because I have the older Intel processor, who knows, but on the newer cars, you will see an option to vo avoid highways. If you choose to, you'll have a little uh, checkbox to do that. So not a problem. So back at the release notes, let's go to the next item here. We have keyboard languages. You can easily switch between different language input methods on your touchscreen. To add keyboards, go to controls, display keyboards to switch between them. Long press the global icon on your keyboard and select the desired keyboard. So let's test that out. Let's go into controls, display, And now let's see, we have keyboards here. So let's click on keyboard language and then you can go through the list here and select which keyboard that you prefer. So that's always a nice option for those that do not use English. All right. The next major item on the list here is keep accessory power on. User charge devices through the low voltage outlets, USB ports, or the inductive phone charger after exiting the vehicle, as long as the battery, high voltage battery that is, is above 20%. When enabled, these ports remain powered even if you are not present and the vehicle is not in use. Note that this may increase the vehicle's power consumption even if no device is connected. You can go into controls, charging, 
keep accessory power on. All the way at the bottom of the list here, you'll see that option now, keep accessory power on. So this is um, a fix for something that was changed last year where they took away the accessory power. And some people that have things like the trunk fridges and other devices such as dash cams that they want powered all the time lost that ability. So at least with this now, you have the option of turning on the switch to have power on all the time for the accessory outlets, uh, especially the USB ports. So for some people, this is something that is uh, very important and I'm glad to see that they've added that. I am gonna turn it off. And next on our list is minor updates. When viewing a charger location page, nearby restaurants, cafes, and shops within walking distance are now displayed at the bottom. So I'm guessing so if I go to navigation and I go to charging and I'll go down to a supercharger near me, let's see what it shows. If I click on the supercharger location here, I'm not sure if it showed this exactly the same way, but you can see the nearby amenities at the stop. I am not seeing a uh, distance though. Not sure if that's just a limitation of my car or not, but that's what I see on mine. Media search results are now filtered by sources, providing faster and more streamlined access to content. So if we go to the media page here and click on search. So if I type in a search, since everybody is talking about her recently, let's do a search here. And now we can see we have results in stations, podcasts, audiobooks, episodes. So if you want to switch your search, you could just uh, change it to a different input. So not that big a deal. Next, we have sign in with your Amazon Music Free account requires premium connectivity or an active Wi-Fi connection. So let's uh, go right back down again to uh, choose media source. Now we have Amazon Music. And if I did the QR code, I can log into my Amazon account and have access to music. So that's nice to have. You can now shuffle an entire Apple Music playlist that contains more than 100 songs. See what song will play next on your YouTube Music playlist in the Up Next view of the media player. In your navigation settings, you can choose to show or hide chargers on the map that are not owned or serviced by Tesla. That's something I want to see. Let me go into Controls down to navigation, and I can scroll down to the bottom here. And there's this option now that says, third-party charging stations shows fast charging stations and destination charging stations not owned or serviced by Tesla. So that's nice because that'll uh, increase the number of charging possibilities that you have, especially on long trips. That's very nice to have. So I am gonna leave that on. The new rear camera views shows a wider field of view, improving visibility for rear cross traffic. Um, that is only for the hardware for uh, vehicles. Mine doesn't have that, so I don't have any change in my rear camera view. If I want to see my rear camera, I just press the camera. Of course, I have a car cover on right now on the rear, so that is uh, not showing too much, but uh, there we go. Next, if your hotspot is enabled, it will automatically connect to your vehicle once you start driving, so you won't have to reconnect each time. That's really handy if uh, you don't have the data plan in the car, you can use hotspot. Definitely a good addition. Next, contact photos are now displayed for incoming calls and in the vehicle's phone app. 
And finally, this update includes important security fixes and improvements. That happens every update, nothing specific. And those are all the things that I have listed on my car. By the way, I have a 2018 long range rear wheel drive, which is uh, becoming very old right now. It's gonna be turning seven years old uh, later in the month. And I do not get all of the cool new features when these software updates happen. For example, if you have a newer car, here's some things you may see. High beams now adapt to reduce glare for other drivers and cyclists by detecting other road users and selectively dimming individual pixels of the headlights, your high beams stay on more for greater visibility at night. For your information, Matrix headlights began to appear on the Model 3 and Y in early 2022. However, it didn't become available on all variants until mid 2023. So if you have one of those cars, go into controls, lights, adaptive headlights. Next thing we have is dash cam update and side camera recording. If you have a hardware four vehicle, which I don't have, your vehicle's side cameras on the B pillar will now be recorded on both dash cam and sentry clips. The dash cam viewer app has also been updated with a grid view, making it easier to access and review recordings. Next, save trunk height based on location. Customize the opening height of your trunk and save it as a default or for a specific location such as your garage. To set the height, pause the trunk while it's moving using the touch screen. Alternatively, manually adjust it to your preferred height, then press and hold the trunk close button until you hear a chime. To set your existing trunk openings to the factory default height or to clear any saved locations, go to controls, service, remove save locations. Of course, power trunk is only available on the later model three cars. And lastly, an undocumented feature on the camera app. The camera app has been updated so that the repeater cameras are now displayed at the top instead of the bottom. Each camera feed is also labeled so that users can easily identify the rear left and right cameras. So that's about it. That's everything that has been updated on my car or if you have a newer car with this 2025.14.1 update. There have been a few updates over the past couple months and most of them have been just minor things. That's why I haven't done an update video in quite a while. I may do an update video that talks about some of those changes over the last couple months that I haven't talked about. So look forward to that coming out soon. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.